And now to the collection-based approach. And as a source for data, I'm going to choose a T data set because in this case, we're not simply replying to events and I can't do something like, okay, this is number one, this is number two. Now this works differently. Here you have to actually populate the data into the tree view before it's being shown. And just to be clear, I said before it's being shown, it means, of course, you can also trigger events like if a certain node is being expanded, that at that point you add more data. So the collection-based approach gives you a way more dynamic of loading data into your tree view. You have to make the decision right from the start. Do you want to work with a fixed data set using the virtual approach? Or do you need way more dynamic that things change, things are going to be deleted or inserted or appended and are things going to be added as soon as something is being expanded, then the collection based mode is simply the way that you have to go. And why did I pick T data set? Of course, this allows you to display information from a database. Once again, I'm going to start way from scratch with a VCL application file, new Windows VCL application and there is no difference from the other approach we picked. So we drop the FNC tree view on the form. We align it, AL client. The only difference to the previous example is that we now need a database as well. So for that, I pick a FireDAC connection and FireDAC query. And we don't need a data source or anything because we're going to manually transfer the data from the database over into our grid. Of course, these two usually would go into a data module not to interfere with our visual components. So here we go. We have the connection set up. We set the query simply as query and the connection I name connection. I double click it and I have a database set up that allows me to show points of interest. I'm going to explain that while handing in the query with example query results. Select star from points of interest. Execute. Okay. Here you go. So we have, if this dialog will cooperate with me, we have points of interest in Lee County, Florida in the United States. We see that we have things like post offices, we have water parks, all the kind of stuff. And it's all nicely grouped by city and by type. And that's exactly what we are going to build our tree view on. The route will specify the type like post office, retail, airport, whatever it is. And of course, then we'll group by city and then we'll give the actual well, point of interest inside of that city. So we will have the type as our root, the city is going to be our child, and then the other column information we'll give in the child of the child of the root as the full address, what it is, the name of the thing. And the uh, we also have, as far as I know, we have the uh, website. Before we can do that, however, we have to do some preparation because how are we going to build the tree? Well, we're going to start at the top of our data set. And of course we want thinking of runtime behavior. Of course we want to have like linear time. We only want to iterate our data set once, right? So this is just a splash of information. If I, for example, say type count star from, sorry, star from POI, we get the total number of columns, which is over 400. So if we were jumping around in the data set, that wouldn't make any sense. So in order to build our tree, I want to go from top to bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it back to this, but I'm going to order it by, and this is the trick. Basically, I'm going to order it by type and city and then the name. And that way, I can start, if I find the type again here, airport, airport, arena, arena, beach, beach, and then 
if remembering that value, I can go to the city and you see like I have the beach, I have the beach in Boca Grande, then I have the beach in Bonita Springs, then I have the beach in Cape Coral. So I only need to do this once from top to bottom. So that's our query and our connection. And just as we did it before, we build a method which is called procedure populate tree. What we're going to do there, of course, we're going to clear everything. Tree dot clear. We don't want any columns. And for the tree, I want five columns type, city, name, address, and link, the web link. And we have many, many ways to do this. Obviously, I don't want to type the same thing five times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a constant array. And I'm going to call it call titles. And it's an array of string. And I'm going to define it as follows with all my type city name address and link of course i could do the same thing later on for the database fields and map that this is a demo i'm i'm not going to make it that complicated so the the tree is cleared and now Remember, this is dot far rear, so I can say for var i equals zero to high or even to go all crazy low call titles to high call titles. That's really um, whatever I do to, to my data structure, this is not going to break. And then I'm going to say tree. And of course, I have to name the tree view tree first, something I tend to forget, tree dot. Now you can say columns dot add and here we go dot text equals call titles i this is the fastest way to get five column titles set up in the tree also what we can't forget is we have to call populate tree from somewhere i suggest we do this in the form on show event here populate tree also something I always forget the connection has to get the login prompt to false otherwise we're going to be bothered every time we start the application and as soon as that is done we can open our query query active is true and of course in the end we can say query active equals false if we don't want to edit as I don't want to. The next step is I like to have database field references as objects in my code. So I click the query, right click it, fields editor, add all fields. And this way I can, for example, use query city dot as string, query city and so on to work with them in code going from there okay now I just like every good TV cook I already have my code prepared because I don't want to bore you to death typing all this we opened the query that's where we left off and I always have to remember the current type that is currently being worked on and the current city that is being worked on I always tend to do credo first before doing an iteration of all the records inside of a query. That is just something I do. Performance enthusiasts will say, Holger, you lose time. I don't know. I, I just want to be safe that I'm really on the first record. And, um, and then I'm going to say, hey, is the current type equals or not equal to the current type? If that is the case, I'm going to reset the nodes that I'm using as a reference point because I have to remember the the nodes that I basically put my stuff under, right? Because if I have all my types, the, the cities need to know which type they belong to. And of course, the um, then the different records need to know which city they belong to. So I need to 
update those if the type or the city changes. And then if I don't have a node so far for the type, meaning this is the first one, then I create a node. And this is exactly the key of everything where it becomes very much different. I create a new node using tree.addNode. And the first parameter, and I'm going to retype this tree.addNode. And this add node hands me a TTMS FNC tree view node instance, which is the node, which is the objects that you interact with in your code to make modifications to a node. And the parameter that you pass in there is the parent node, meaning if you want to make the node that you create a child of an already existing node, you would pass that parent node as a parameter. As I don't have a parent node on the first level, I simply hand in nil. And the text is going to be the type that the node is going to represent, meaning query type dot as string. And the key is you also have to specify the column. So the first column is going to have the text of the type. The same for the city. If there's no city, we create the city node. But this time, and this is key, we pass in the type node as the parent, meaning the city node will become the child of the type node. And of course, the city node also has a text, which is in the database field city as a string. And the column this time is one because I wanted to put it in column one, not in column zero, which is the type. And also pay attention to the fact that I don't specify any values for all the other columns. I only specify values for the first and the second column so far. And uh, that's it. So doing that, let us uncomment everything I pasted here and let's see what we do so far of course never ever forget the query next this is my favorite mistake to make for endless loops you know and uh, what we also have to do before we start the next iteration for the next record we have to remember the current type and the current city right so here we go and here you see on the first level, we have all the different types and we can expand it. And we have only an airport in Fort Myers. We have arenas in Estero in Fort Myers. We have beaches everywhere. This is Florida and beach access also everywhere. Okay, so this is the point we're at. So the last step is we need to add yet another node, make the city the parent node and have to add name address and link right the actual information that we want to show so going from there we uh uncomment this again and this is pretty straightforward so our node with the information is going to be a child node of the city node and again ignore these the uh, second column we put in the name of the point of interest the third column is going to be the street address. And this is a little bit Delphi, new Delphi string dot is null or empty. Basically, I check if the website is specified in the database. And if the website is being specified in the database, I'm going to use the HTML um, feature of the tree view. You can specify HTML as column text and the component will interpret it correctly. So I'm creating a link here with the a HTML tag, and I'm going to make the, the um, web address that's stored inside of the database the target of this link. And the column itself is simply going to say link. And if you can click it, and then you go to the website that is being specified in the database. And of course, if there is no website specified i simply specify nothing for that column and here we go we've been here before the top items next level city but this time we actually have a little icon that we have children we click it and we have the hertz arena formerly the germain arena and if you click it on the link you see they haven't updated their database yet it still specifies germain arena but here you go and we're using a feature inside of the tree view that 
immediately launches our web browser and everything completely automatically. So this is how easy it is to populate a tree view using the collection-based approach.